All right, and in case you didn't already guess, there's confidence intervals for everything. Yeah, let me just adjust this mic here. Okay, not that you guessed, but I probably already told you. There's confidence intervals for everything. Seriously, for everything. Actually, no, not for everything. Some things it's really kind of annoying. No, everything. You can always do simulations and create a confidence interval. So let's review a confidence interval for a single mean. We kind of assume, for the sake of argument, that the mean of the population is the same as our sample mean. Because why not? Because that's the best estimate of that population mean that we actually have. If we had a better estimate, we'd use that. Um, um, do you know where my tablet is? Yes. Can you say confidence interval right here? Confidence. Confidence? Confidence. Interval. Interval. And can you say hi, students? Hi, students. Okay, your tablet movie is on top of the white thing with your stuff. Anyway, that was Sam. Um, so then we just find the middle, whatever, 90, 95, 99 percent of the uh, sampling distribution there. And we've got our confidence interval. That's it. <coughs> it's just the middle, say, 95 percent of all possible sample means that we think we might find under random sampling if the mean of the population was the same as our sample mean. And we usually interpret that by saying we're 95 percent confident that the true mean is between these two numbers. So here's a single value. The null hypothesis says that you know the mean of the population and therefore of the sampling distribution of means is somewhere, like there's some null hypothesis mean, like maybe it's up here or something. But for confidence intervals, remember, the mean is assumed to be our sample mean. Notice how these lines line up here. See, I did that. I'm just all kinds of clever like that. And so we find the middle 95% of the sampling distribution, and then wherever those numbers land, it's the sample mean plus and minus a margin of error. Wherever those numbers land, that's our confidence interval. So remember this basic principle, a confidence interval is just a sample statistic plus and minus uh, some standard errors, like 1.96 standard errors or 2.58 standard errors, just the right number of standard errors. So calculating the confidence interval, as you recall, was the sample statistic, the mean here, plus or minus a certain number of standard errors. So the t tells us how many standard errors, and then the standard error value itself is the size of those. It's the size of the steps. So you should remember this. And remember that that part is the standard error of the mean, and then that whole thing together is the margin of error. So that's a confidence interval for a single mean. Let's apply this to two independent sample means. Our statistic now is a difference. It's not a mean. It's a difference between two sample means. And so we're going to find the confidence interval for that difference. So the sampling distribution is the distribution of all possible differences. Okay, that's not supposed to be TCR it. It's supposed to be T crit. Anyway, um, should I just dive in and change this here? Yeah, might as well. Yeah, that works. So the formula for calculating uh, a confidence interval for a difference between means, you just plug in the right things. Instead of one mean, now you have a difference between means in this spot. And instead of the simpler formula for, for a standard error, you have a more complicated formula for a standard error. But the same thing, t critical, it's still the same three pieces. There we go, same pieces. And that's the standard error. Now it's the standard error of the difference between means. Oh, by the way, that includes the radical sign. I just used the wrong shape there. And the whole thing together, when you multiply it out, that number is the margin of error. So it's just a difference between means plus or minus a margin of error of differences. So we have to specify and know in our head what our sampling distribution of differences is to truly understand what this is and interpret it correctly. It's the sampling distribution of all differences between um, all possible means from population 1 and means from population 2, assuming that the difference in those means is the difference that our sample says the difference should be. That difference will not be zero anymore. It'll be the difference, the, the expected difference in the population for differences between means will not be zero. It'll be, the, it'll be the difference that we found in our sample. This assumes random sampling. Sample mean is the population mean. Population of all possible differences. We have a difference in our sample, and we assume that the population uh, mean is that same difference, mean of all possible differences. So 
know our sampling distribution. So we can look at this chart and we can say for confidence intervals, for two sample means, the point estimate, every value in that distribution is a possible difference between pairs of sample means from population one and population two. The mean of that distribution is actually the difference between our two sample means. So it's a population of all possible differences and the mean of that population is the difference that we happen to find. Standard error is the same as for a null hypothesis or power analysis. It's just the standard error of the difference between means. And the raw score distribution, if we choose to think about it, is uh, the raw score, the difference between all raw scores, um, assumed with the mean assumed to be our sample mean difference. So the values in the sampling distribution are differences between means. The shape is normal slash t. And we have to know the degrees of freedom to find the right distribution. And the degrees of freedom are the same as for a t-test. Because the de degrees of freedom aren't really for the t-test, they're for the sampling distribution. The sampling distribution of differences between means. And the mean, of course, is our sample mean. And our, and our sample statistic is a difference between means. So it's not a, a single sample mean, it's the difference between our two sample means. The standard error, it's the same standard error as for a t-test. So here's the explanation with some pictures. So if the null hypothesis is true, then our two samples, so for a hypothesis test, then our two samples came from um, random sampling from a population. What was this here? Really loud. Random sampling from a population that has uh, uh, equal means. So two populations that are basically one population because the means are equal. And we just happened to find what looked like a difference between the two means in our in our sample. Our sample looked like a difference, but it's not really a difference. So that's what's going on with the null hypothesis. And if the null hypothesis is true, then the mean of all possible differences between means is zero. And I just put these little notes up here. Sometimes I do this to remind myself. Everything to the left means that the mean one is smaller than mean two if this is a distribution of mean one minus mean two and not the other way around. And everything to the right means mean one is bigger than mean two because these are differences. So everything to the left would be negative, therefore mean one is smaller. Everything to the right is positive, therefore mean one is larger. So this is the null hypothesis setup. This is how our this is how our data came to be the way it is according to the null hypothesis. And according to the null hypothesis, um, there's a certain probability associated with finding our sample mean difference. And in this case it's very small. I put it way out in the tail. But the confidence interval is a different situation. The confidence interval basically assumes that the means of the two populations, and therefore their sampling distributions of means, both the raw scores and the sampling distributions of both populations from which our samples came from, are the same as the means of our samples. And that therefore, with random sampling, on average, we would actually find this difference. So I know it's a, a silly assumption, but it's the only assumption we can really make truthfully, because it's the only data that we have. So the mean now of the sampling distribution is centered over whatever the difference is between our sample means. So if that mean was negative 25.6, well now that's the mean of the sampling distribution of differences. And we just find those numbers. And that's our confidence interval. And those numbers are differences. We can't extend those numbers back down to this raw score line anymore like I usually do with confidence intervals up until now because that doesn't make any sense anymore. They, those aren't the same things. This is raw scores and this is differences. These are not the same distribution at all. Um, maybe I should make that a little clearer. These are differences. So this might be, you know, negative 12.9 or you know, negative 35 and negative 12 or something like that. So it's differences between means. It's the 95% confidence for where the true difference between means would lie. So calculating it is actually easier than working it out. So you've always got a point estimate, question mark, oh, come on. Anyway, that's the plus and minus symbol, which worked here in the equations. Anyway, plus or minus the Z or the T score times a standard error. So in this case, it's our point estimate is a difference between means. Oh, come on, this is, the subscripting is getting crazy here. T critical times a standard error. So here's this example again with social anxiety treatments. Find the 95% confidence interval for the effect size. Here's the means and the standard deviations. The means are in purple, 68.44, 45.44, and the standard deviations are 23.48 and 28.24. So find that confidence interval. You know how to do this. See if you can work this through for as frustrating as it might be, and even if it takes you an hour, you'll learn a lot about how to do this if you work this through before you see the answer. I, I promise this is true. If you work things through, 
even if you get the wrong answer, you'll learn the mechanics, you'll learn what's going on, your brain will start to grow those connections the more you do this. 95% confidence interval. The confidence interval is going to be for the effect size, in other words, for the difference between the two means. Confidence interval for the difference. So, looking up the, the t-critical, because the t-critical just shows you what t-value gives you a certain area in the tails of a distribution, right? So the distribution we have to use has to be the distribution with 9 degrees of freedom, so this one up here. And we just want to find the t-critical value that gives us 0.025 in one tail and 0.05 if you add up both tails. So it's 2.26, same as for a hypothesis test that's two-tailed, alpha equals 0.05. Same thing. Just like for z-scores, it's the same idea. You're using the same distribution for confidence intervals as you are for um, hypothesis tests. And for t-tests t and t-confidence intervals, it's the same thing. It's just same same numbers. So calculating it, here's the formula. We plug in our numbers here. The difference between our means, those are our two means. we got to kind of keep straight. It doesn't matter as much with a two-tailed test, but it's good practice. And with one-tailed test, it's critical. you got to keep this straight. We had treatment minus placebo. And so we plug in all the values here. We didn't actually have the variance, but we had the standard deviation. We can square it. So S squared, that works. So calculating that out, I end up with a margin of error of 26.25 and a point estimate, a difference between our means of positive 23. So the lower limit is negative 3.25 and the upper limit is 49.25. So that's the numbers I ended up getting here. Please let me know if you got something different. So that's where we're 95% sure things would fall. The interpretation would be something like the difference. We might report the, this, the individual means. We might not. Here I did. Um, the post-test, oh, it should be social confidence scores of the treatment group. Mean is 45.44, etc. So we have to get around to the difference between them, and I probably should have reported the standard deviation, was 23 points. And the 95% confidence interval for that difference is this number right here. recording but I'm recording something that I'm going to edit. Oh okay. Well let me just stop this recording then. So our interpretation would be something like the difference between um, the scores and I might report the individual sample means and standard deviations. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes they've been reported elsewhere. They need to go somewhere though. But I report the size of the thing we're looking at, 23 points, and then I report the confidence interval. So as a last question before I end this lecture, is it plausible that the treatment is more effective at reducing anxiety symptoms than the placebo is? You can answer that from the confidence interval, so see if you can answer that.